So in our completed texture sheet, we can see I've extracted two windows and you know, I've gone ahead and added some fans and some paint color on top of the original texture just to kind of spruce them up and make them my own. So let's start with that. Let's go ahead and talk about how we might extract a detail like this. I'm going to go ahead and minimize that. So here is the uh, reference photo of the windows. It's a nice straight on shot, which means it's going to make it easy for us to extract the details. And I'm going to go ahead and just hit M on the keyboard to grab my marquee select tool. And let's zoom in and make some space here. So I'm just going to make a quick selection and, and crop this out of this photo. And I don't want any of this trim up here because, again, we're going to make our own um, roof trim that's going to line the tops of the windows. I do, however, want this nice window frame. And I'm probably going to grab it just right underneath this window seal. So I'm just going to go ahead and left click and drag and make a, a quick selection here. We can always clean this up later. And we have a couple options. I can just simply copy and paste this into our other document, or we can hit V and grab the Move tool and just cut right out. And you can see it's it's non-destructive. It's going to leave that there. Now, it should be obvious, right, for a 2048 texture, um, this window should not be taking up that much space. So let's go ahead and scale this down. And make this a little bit smaller. Keep zooming in. And I'm just using control plus and control minus to zoom in and out. Now you can kind of see probably that my texture bounds are starting to kind of snap to grids and that's excellent. So if this is not on for you, we can always just make sure that snap is enabled. And for snap two, um, I've got document bounds and guides and grids on. I don't have any guides in this texture yet, but we may use those. Document bounds is helpful because the texture will snap to the corners um, and sides of our texture, but at the very least we need grids on. So you can see here that um, I've managed to get the photo extracted and in here and on the grid. Now, for example, if uh, maybe your texture is a little bit off the grid like this, I would highly recommend that you don't do a lot of stretching to your textures. Obviously, this is going to create um, weird artifacts. Your textures will look blurred, that kind of thing. But a tiny bit of stretching is OK, especially if we're just trying to get it to conform to a grid. So if I just grab this and pull it down until it snaps into place, and then, of course, hit Enter to save my transform, that's OK. So very minor stretching is all right. Anything excessive, though, not a good idea. And I would actually just do the same thing for um, the next bit here. In this case, I would, again, press M or grab my marquee, hold Shift as I left click, and just kind of move this down. And let's see. Probably want about the same amount of uh, window frames selected, so I'm just going to kind of eyeball that. And again, making sure that I'm grabbing just under the window seal. Grab my move tool again or press V. And let's go ahead and just drag this in. So again, make sure show transform controls is on to get the scale gizmo. And I'm just going to hold shift to drag from the edge. But as you can see, it's going off the uh, canvas. So if I hold alt as well, it will drag from the center. So we can actually just hold alt shift, get there. And let's go ahead and line this up to the grid as well. And it looks like that worked out pretty nicely. We shouldn't have to do much at all. Just the bottom here looks like it's slightly off the grid, so I'm just going to click and drag, scale it into place, and hit Enter to save my transform. So you can see really quickly, right, we're able to just extract photo details. Very simple. Um, you know, I would do this for most of the texture details on that sheet, as well as kind of blending together certain photographs to get the look that I'm going for. And now, just for organizational sake, I'm just going to go ahead and label these Window 01, and we'll call this Window 02. And with these selected, if I go ahead and hit Control G, it will group them for us. And we'll just call those Windows. All right. So if we go ahead and bring back um, our final texture, you can see the same technique, just extracting photo, photo details, um, aligning them onto the grid, and you know, just kind of grouping them and organizing them. That's pretty much the process for this. Now I want to point out, though, again, I'm using the grid to make sure that these pieces will work together nicely once they're modeled. And as an example of that, you can see that our windows, when stacked on top of each other, are the same dimension, so the same width and height. And our roof trim is actually the same width as the windows as well. So I know that if we if we kind of, um, see if we can go back and grab this photo, I want my, my roof trim to kind of just line up on top of these windows. And for the tops of the pillars, I'll make, maybe make a new piece, and for corners, I'll make a new piece. But just as we can see, though, these pieces are all kind of lining up nicely. 
And same thing with the ground trim. The ground trim right here is the same width and dimensions as our windows. So uh, that's kind of the basic concept. So with, with our texture started and, and more photo details extracted, let's go ahead and jump into Max and start talking about how we can break out some meshes onto the grid and uh, get modeling.